1990 Chevy Lumina with a 3.1. Customer complaint is the fuel pump fuse keeps blowing. Unfortunately, what the customer did when they brought the car to us is they uh, rigged up a fuse and wrapped wires around it to get the car here. So never a good idea. But that's where we're at. We're checking a circuit for too much current flow. And what the owner of the vehicle did also is they took the uh, cap off of the relay. So you can see in my picture right here that the cap is actually missing, uh, which is no big deal. We can actually see the activity of the relay. So what, what I've done is installed a, a fuse bypass tool. And what this tool allows me to do is it allows me to get a current measurement on this circuit. So we just have a rigged up circuit, uh, have an inline fuse here. And what we're gonna do is take an amperage reading. That's the fuse that the customer states keeps blowing. So I'm using an amp probe set on a 20 amp scale and we're gonna monitor the amperage of this fuel pump circuit. Now, the other thing that he told us is that when he turns his heater on inside the car, that's when the fuse blows. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at a wiring diagram now and, and see what ties together between the heater circuit and the fuel pump circuit. So go into a wiring diagram. All right, here's our wiring diagram for this car. Let me walk you through this very quickly. I have it marked up already, so it might make this uh, a little bit easier. Here's the fuse that, that keeps blowing on this car. And uh, looking at that circuit, let's follow what the fuse feeds. Um, it feeds actually two wires on the ECM. So that would power up the ECM. At the same time, it comes down, there's a splice, and goes to the load side of the fuel pump relay and it also feeds through this way to the fuel pump oil pressure switch. And this is a bypass in case the relay fails. That's why that GM ran an oil pressure switch in parallel. Uh, it was not intended to shut the car off if you had low oil pressure. It's there as a backup. If you look at the diagram, you can see it. So our, our pump sits up here. It's this blue, or I have it colored blue. It's actually a gray wire. So there's your fuel tank unit. That's your fuel pump power right here. And that needs to be powered at that splice. That power is gonna come from this relay. When this relay closes, it's gonna attach this uh, orange wire, which I have colored pink. It's gonna run across the switch and feed out this way on the orange wire, which is actually gray, um, that comes up this way to the pump unit. And it also, on the 3.1 engine, which is what we have, it says ECM, 3.1 and that isn't really a power feed for the ECM that's a monitored circuit for the fuel pump so the computer actually watches the fuel pump power feed on that wire to know if that circuit's functional and that's where a trouble code is going to come from which by the way we do have which was a code 54 which was a fuel pump circuit too high or too low a voltage and that code is coming from that wire that circuit's the one that's monitored for that trouble code all right, so again, fuse that's blowing is this one. As you can see, the only thing that would cause this fuse to blow would be the fuel pump itself, if the fuel pump is drawing too much current, or if there's a short to ground anywhere on this section of wire. So this gray wire, which I have colored blue, this gray wire here, which is colored orange, this orange wire, which is colored pink, anywhere in there we could have a short to ground or we have a fuel pump that is failing. That's it, that's the only thing that would blow this fuse. The customer stated that the heater circuit, when he turns the heater on, that's when the fuse would blow, and we're not seeing that on this diagram. I, I don't see in here at all where the heater circuit's involved. Um, that could be a coincidence that when he, when he turned his heat on, that that's just when it, so, when it decided to happen, it is possible, but Something to put in the back of our minds right now is the heater circuit. Um, one other statement would be the fuel pump oil pressure switch. Just how this operates very quickly. Oil pressure is what's going to close this switch. When this switch closes with oil pressure, as you can see in this diagram, it is an alternate path for current to travel to the fuel pump circuit. So it is not there to protect 
the engine in case there's no oil pressure, which is what everybody thinks in the field, they're mistaken. The reason that that switch is there is back up in case the relay fails. If you pull a fuel pump relay out on a GM with the car running, that car will continue to run through the oil pressure switch. The reason we need to pay attention to it is that could be a place where we have a wire that's touching ground is under the hood somewhere under the car. So that's the diagram. Let's go back to the car and what we're going to do, we're going to take some readings and we're going to focus first of all on our fuel pump current. We're going to be able to do that. We'll have a jumper wire installed where the fuse goes with our own fuse in place of it and we're going to put our amp clamp around here and we're going to take an amperage reading of what the fuel pump is drawing. We're back on the car. We're going to do a fuel pump measurement and I have an amp probe connected to this jumper that we have in place of the fuse uh, using that uh, fuse jumper little fuse buddy tool and uh, got an amp probe connected and we'll take a look at our reading of our fuel pump typical port fuel injected engine is going to run between four and six amps of current typical um, go ahead and uh, start the car and let's see what this looks like Well, right away we had an amperage reading and then we have nothing. The car is chugging really bad. Amperage just showed up again. I'm gonna change my time base, see if we can look a little bit more of this. That's pretty crazy looking. Amperage is coming and going. See those big spikes in amperage there too? Watch this for a minute. We might we might be seeing right now why this fuse is blowing. I'm gonna change this change this to a 20 amp scale so we can see that spike a little bit more. See what kind of amperage we're hitting on that. Let's see if I can keep this car running. Gotta start it back up. <laughs> Yeah, it started back up. Sure, the heater's not. Now it's stable. All right, and the customer mentioned turning the heater on and, and that was shutting the car off. So we can, uh, we can see if that's really affecting the circuit. We know it's not on the wiring diagram. Got to reach in, turn the heat on, see what happens with the heater on. As soon as you turn the heat on, we lost our fuel pump control, car shut off. So our fuel pump shut off when we turned the heat on. That does match what the customer says. The only difference is customer stated the fuse is blowing. <clears throat> I'm not seeing the fuse blow. Go ahead and leave that off for a second. And, um, oh, I might have wiped it out. We can't, uh, I think, go back that far to see those spikes. On the screen, when we were seeing those amperage spikes, uh, to address that for a second, if you have an electric motor, in particular a DC electric motor with brushes that's being turned on and turned off, you will get large amounts of voltage and current spikes every time that motor is turned on and off. And the reason behind that electric motor is it has to do with counter electromotive force. And when you first turn it, um, an electric motor on, there's really no resistance. The motor has to spin up to create resistance. And so you can blow a fuse by rapid turning on and off of a DC electric motor. I believe that's what's blowing the fuse on this circuit. Let's see if we can prove that. You can see clearly though that this circuit's shutting off. We're losing amperage. We're losing amperage when we turn the heater on. That matches the customer's complaint. We're losing amperage just watching the car run to this fuel pump. 
So what we need to address now with this loss of current on the pump is we want to address the relay. And we want to address the control side and the load side of the relay. And I want to show you um, that we know it's a control issue. We know it's a control issue by simply watching the relay when this problem occurs. And I think we sh I should be at the right angle that we can catch that here. Um, go ahead and start the car and let's watch this relay. The relay close and then open right back up again. Watch the relay, watch the switch on it. See the switch opening and closing? Right now it's closed. So where we're watching on that, we're watching right here in this area is where your switch is. And uh, it's latched right now. Go ahead and turn the heater on. As soon as you turn the heater on, that switch opened up. All right, we'll let the car stall, it's fine. All right, cool. All right, so here's what we know. This is a control side issue. It's not a load side and a switch problem, because it could be, you can have a relay that fails. But a load side switch problem on a relay for this circuit wouldn't match in at all to the heater circuit. The heater isn't even on this circuit. But here's what we know. It is a control side problem for this relay. So the next two things we're gonna do is we're gonna monitor the pump current at the same time we're looking at the fuel pump control, power, and ground. I'm gonna take you back to the diagram real quick just to emphasize those two, those two and then we'll look at the scope. Okay, looking back at this diagram again, um, taking a look at the control side of the relay. Again, we're gonna look at this side because what we saw in the video, we saw this latch opening and closing, the, the load side. So. Uh, the way this control side works, and this is pretty typical of GM, you can see that um, this says ECM, it's a dark green and white wire, and um, black is the other side. So this is your control side, the coil, dark green and white. GM has used a dark green and white wire for their control, for their uh, fuel pump circuits forever, 20 years probably at least. And they were all power side switched. We know this is power side switched, and uh, by the way, that's section three in my book, Review uh, Power Ground Side Switching, section three. Um, this is power side switched because we have an external ground. So this coil to make a magnetic field, which is its job, it needs to have power and that power comes from the ECM. So the ECM switches the positive side or power side of this relay to turn it on. What we're going to do is we're gonna monitor at the same time, we're gonna monitor the fuel pump control side power, the dark green and white wire, and we're gonna monitor the fuel pump control side ground, the black wire, at the same time. Somewhere in one of these two circuits, we're gonna see a problem, right? It could just be a relay too, but we need to monitor these two controls to make sure that we're not dropping out voltage on one of the control wires. So now we'll go back to the car and we'll monitor actually three things. We'll look at the fuel pump current, so we'll see the current turning on and off, and we'll look at the control side power and control side ground at the same time. Okay, so we're, we're back at the car. We're looking at fuel pump power. I'm sorry. We're looking at the current flow from the fuel pump, and that's the blue trace that's at zero amps right now. We're looking at the fuel pump control power which is the green wire I have connected to, um, actually I'll show you real quick. Um, I, I'm at the relay here and I am connected using a couple piercing tools which everybody just loves when I poke holes in wires. But uh, if you look closely at it, you'll see that uh, this one's connected to the green and white and this one's connected to the black. Kind of tough to see that. But I'm at the base of the relay. So the yellow lead is my black. And my green 
lead is my dark green and white. Back to the scope. Those are all zero volts right now. With the blue trace being zero amps, um, go ahead and, uh, and you see the digital numbers here. This is live. Right here is my digital. Let's back out just a little bit. All right, go ahead and start that. Take a look at these numbers. That's a pretty cool looking picture. I'll explain it to you in a minute what we're looking at. The car's actually running off a rest presser. You know, your pump's actually running for a period of time and then uh, it's shutting off. It's actually running on rest presser. Nice. That is a cool looking picture. So it, really tough to kind of pick out what's going on in there. Uh, but again, you have to understand what we're looking at. The green trace is the control side power feed, which comes from the computer. We said the computer power side switches this relay. So what we know by the green trace, the green trace staying up near 14 volts during this uh, event. If you look at the blue trace, what you're seeing in the blue trace is no current flow for the pump down here and then we get current flow, then no current flow, and so on. If you look at the green trace during the no current flow event and the current flow event, we never lost control side power feed. The computer is still sending out the voltage to keep the relay energized. Our problem is the fuel pump control side ground. Look at the voltage on the, on the yellow wire. This is supposed to be a ground wire. If you look at the voltage on this circuit, it should be hanging down around zero volts. And you see all this activity in this, in this ground, this high-low voltage. It's actually spiking very, very high. Um, what's the max number? It's actually burying the max number. You see that? It didn't even catch it on my scale. So it's overscaled. It's over 20 volts. Something's turning on and turning off on that. It's spiking that ground. The only time my fuel pump ever comes back to life is when that ground voltage drops to at least something near normal. I mean, it's still not. It's still like four or five volts on a ground. This is a bad relay ground. Now, what in common would that have with the heater circuit? I'm gonna show you that real quick. Unfreeze this picture. The key is on, the engine is off. Correct, the key is on. Can you reach in and turn the heater on for me? Notice, with the heater on, the car's not running, but with the heater on, your yellow trace, again, is that relay ground, okay? If that yellow trace is the heater ground, sorry, if that yellow trace is the fuel pump control side of the relay ground, is it possible that the heater circuit shares that same ground and that that ground is bad? And the answer is yes. That's what's going on with this car. That's why that voltage is high right there. That's why the car shuts off when you turn the heater on, is it's loading that ground with more current flow. It's a bad ground to begin with, and that's what's killing this car. Now, how can we justify the fuse blowing? Again, I'm gonna state it again, if this circuit's rapidly being turned on and off, and it's a DC electric motor, it can and will blow a fuse. When you first start a DC electric motor, you will have a very large amperage spike. And then it drops as the speed of that DC electric motor increases, in our case being the fuel pump. If this circuit's being rapidly turned on and off, that can blow the fuse for this circuit. I don't think this is an over amperage problem. I think it's a circuit that's obviously got a bad ground and that is spiking our amperage every time that pump is being turned on uh, that's what's going on with this. Uh, we gotta find where that ground's located. Let's see if we can find it. Okay, so we, we kinda questioned this whole thing and how's the heater circuit related to the fuel pump? And it wasn't really 
uh, except for some main grounds. So you can see the main ground location is missing the nut. It's not there. And so what we have is a ground connection that as long as the amperage isn't too high, can carry the current flow necessary to keep the relay latched. But as soon as you turn another accessory on, in this case the blower motor, it's loading that ground with more current and it can't handle it, drives the voltage real high. I'm just gonna touch that and what you should see is some arcing. Let's see if I can keep my hand out of the picture. I'm just gonna reach in and wiggle the wires and see if you see an arc and the blower motor should come on. See the spark? See the spark? Did you pick it up? I'm gonna show you what that looks like on the scope. This is, if I wiggle it too much, it's gonna fix it. Let me show you the scope reading. So this is with the blower on. And I'm going to reach down and wiggle that ground and watch what it looks like on the scope. Blower just turned on. This is me wiggling the ground. All right, let's start the car back up and see what it looks like. That car is going to shut off. I'm going to wiggle the ground. We should get that voltage back. That's with me holding it on ground. We got to take that ground off, tighten it up. All right, shut it off. Take a look at that picture. That's with me wiggling it. Blue traces uh, current flow. Green traces the fuel pump control power. Yellow traces the pump control ground and you see as I'm wiggling that connection I'm providing a better ground for this circuit and this is where I let go of it and this is where I pulled on it again and uh, that's it guys that's a bad ground for the block in this case these are computer grounds uh, obviously a relay ground there are other circuits that share this ground bad ground loaded circuit is the key isn't it have the circuit loaded, you'll see it using voltage, no reason to use an ohm meter, loaded circuit, voltage drop test, bad ground.